recommend everybody to, to learn some of these things on their own, learn the, the galaxy and the stars and like that uh, over a period of time. It's, uh, it is rewarding, I guarantee you. Now, Does anybody know what that is? A what? I didn't hear you. Oh, mercy. <laughs> okay, actually you've seen it all before as a, uh, it's one of the classic um, optical illusions, right? Are you looking into the corner of a room or are you looking at the corner, outside corner of a box, right? Are you all familiar with that particular little optical illusion? John, I can't see it. <laughs> yeah, I know why too. <laughs> um, okay, now I want you to practice a little bit on this thing, seeing it, I mean right now, seeing it first as looking into a corner of a room and then flop your mind around to seeing it as a corner of a box pointing outwards, right? This is a mental exercise. And uh, the idea behind it is that uh, everybody knows that the world is round and it spins around, but on the other hand, hardly anybody feels it. We still talk about the sun rising and setting, of course, which it never has and never will, along with the moon and the stars. So the object is, in the same way that you switch your mind with this kind of thing, someday when you're out watching a sunrise or a sunset or just watching the day go by, remember there's two possibilities, same way as here. One is that the sun is actually moving across the sky, and the other one is that you are the one that's moving, you and the earth that you're on are moving. Now, of course, in this case, unlike on the diagram here, only one of those is correct. What I recommend is, in spite of the fact that you're used to the thinking that the sun rises and sets, that you flop your mind around, which is difficult, I will tell you, to feeling that it's your own motion which is uh, happening there instead of the sun or the moon or the stars. Some people get dizzy. Just hang on to something and to keep working at it, and it eventually, it's, you know, it's like anything else. You get used to it. <laughs> uh, the format of the show tonight is we are going to have we got three piano players, super uh, tavern type piano players. He's been doing it around here for years and years. Tommy Ray's gonna start it off. We got Willie Murphy and Steve Kilbride coming on later. Uh, while that's going on, this is a free-for-all. Just check things out, mix with folks. We got beer back there, it's like a party. Check out the things you wanna look at. I have on my person a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a, a small meteorite, which comes from farther away than any human being has ever been, of course. And uh, if you want to feel that, just come up and see me. I'll let you feel it. <laughs> Is that you, Walt? Well, sure. Go across the grocery store, man. I mean, we're there. <laughs> That's the hard part to get through your head. As it were, there. All right. Um, these pendulums are traditionally started off. It's held back now. It's supposed to be held back, so it's perfectly still. And the traditional way of starting it was to have a string holding it back, and then somebody would light a well, 1851 or whatever it was. They didn't have cigarette lighters, but they'd burn the string so that the thing would fall without any. 
uh, imparting any extra motion to it. So if somebody in here has got a match, which would, uh, would you, does anybody want got a lighter? Want to step over and just in the middle of that string, without touching it, light it until it lets go. All right, bar is open. If we get Tommy Ray up here, try to enjoy yourselves. We're going on for about two and a half hours. Tommy, where are you at? Are we late already? Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, one thing has to happen first. Um, we got Dave here. He's done a poem for this thing. He's done this every one of the space taverns. He's got a job tonight over in, uh, where is it again, Dave? Time is 11th of the Nicollet. In case when you get out of here you can't stand it and you got to do something else, you can go over there. Uh, come on up, Dave. By the way, I, my, my personal opinion is that Dave Ray is one of the uh, best poets, especially best reading poets around these days. I was going to read the whole thing, didn't you? Everybody's getting out the NyQuil. Yeah, but you can't read those. Well, tonight's assigned topic was how the hell do you tell if you're out in space? <clears throat> and Mr. X speaks. <clears throat> The first time I got the feeling I was flying through the void was at my aunt's house. She was showing me a small domed object. There was a farmhouse, a field, some little animals and little people. The roof of the dome was colored blue and the pine trees were green. She turned it over, over again and set it down. Little snowflakes fell on the people and trees, little snowflakes all over the barn and field. My aunt who was always indoors said, there's our world, nothing else exists. Wait a sec, I thought, I'm not in there. I'm out here with no snow on me. I don't even live on a farm. My aunt, though, she was in there. For her, the idea of tumbling aimlessly through space was not unappealing. It was impossible, imponderable, and sacrilegious. When I took a bath and saw the drain water going clockwise down the hole, when I heard you could have your birthday twice if you went from Fiji to Pago Pago and back to Fiji again, when I read about Ptolemy and the epicycles, Einstein and the red shift, the big bang, polar migration, diurnal rhythm, seasonal affective disorder, the migration of birds, butterflies, and deer hunting, I knew I was moving through the void, tethered to a lower order source of light by invisible gravity glue, bathed in waves of electromagnetic phosphorescence coursing full blast into the immeasurable distance into the unphotographable darkness way out into mother space. <laughs> Everybody was getting paid in those days to explain the inexplicable. Every day some government scientist found something smaller than he'd found the day before. Upstairs in the observatory, his buddy found something farther away than he thought you could go, while down in the cave, they got deeper and deeper into the hole. Everybody's squeezing that balloon, smaller at one end today, bigger tomorrow, but always the same amount of inside stuff getting massaged, categorized, shuffled, and renamed. Some of them knew the sun rose and set each day, but they were like newcomers to the desert. All they saw was dirt and horizon. Now turn the telescope around and look in your hearts. All your tiny parts are a blueprint for the sea of space in which you sail. All your capillaries, dendrites, end pieces, and seven times around the globe veins are the tiny farmhouses, animals, and snowflakes of a hopelessly gigantic diorama. The desert blooms, but the flowers are so small you have to stay a long time until you see them. Tear up the epicycle plans and replace them with notions of gravity. Burn these and put cosmic glue in their place. Call the earth flat, say we're alone, tell me we don't need a universal language and only one kind of dough, you stay here because I'm gone. 
I'm standing in my yard looking at my feet when I raise my arms, look at my outstretched hands and see beyond them my neighbor's fence, beyond that his neighbor's fence and another and another out to the horizon. Beyond that line, the sky, beyond the sky, ink, black, punctuated by tiny lights, each one of which illuminates a world at full speed. A world with a sky and horizon, a neighbor's fence, his neighbor's fence, a yard, and someone standing on a clump of clay, looking from his outstretched hands down to his feet. We're moving, he's yelling at me. I know it, I yell back, and suddenly we're both standing on a line between Fiji and Pago Pago, and it's on the same day. <laughs> We're going to have Tommy Ray up now. There's going to be, a, there'll be a slideshow with a little more uh, talk about how our uh, universe is constructed a little later. We got uh, Eddie Emerson down here going to play some beautiful stuff on his cello. Uh, I'll do a little playing. I don't normally play at these things, but somebody uh, put something in the paper that said I was going to play, so I guess I better. Yeah. Tommy Ray, give my hand. No, I will end 
One thing I've been forgetting to mention here, we, uh, as you probably have noticed, uh, there's some videoing going on. We've got a couple of monitors here. It's kind of fun to watch yourselves or whatever's going on on the TV sometimes too. That's Willie Freeman run, running this. Willie Freeman running this thing here. Uncle Bill, Mr. Bill. What do you call it, Willie? Anyway, <laughs> undercover with Mr. Bill, okay. Uh, I think it just, just for the hell of it, I'll play a, uh, a tune which I wrote a little while ago, uh, which I, after having not written songs in quite some time, for those of you who haven't heard it anyway. This, uh, it's called The Summer of 88. This song is, uh, well, you can imagine the kind of view you get if you take a look at the world at a uh, certain time. Well, Summer of 88 was a good time to do that. I don't know if you remember, it was hot, uh, real hot down here. Uh, and also, the, uh, it was election year, both of which tried our patiences, of course. <laughs>
were talking to some other folks that were uh, there from out of town. It was Buffalo Joe, yes, and Lou, his girl. They were just getting back up from a trip around the world. Well, Bill said to Joe, what was it like? Yes, what was it like? I said a barbecue, man. Well, I saw some things I had never seen before. And I'll never be the same again and never know. Down in the city, out on the plains, the wind does blow, yes, and it blows the same. It blows the leaves and it blows the dust, it blows on them and it blows on us. Now, a red tailed hawk, when he's flying up high, can see a little bitty snake with his razor sharp eye. And I ate hoot around with her sensitive eye. See a hundred thousand stars more than you and I. Now, if anybody asked you who sang this song, I'd tell them I was some fool that had the been here and gone. If anybody asked you where did he go, on his far, far away where the cool breezes blow and the moon hangs low and the moon hangs high and the good old. never rises and the sun it never sets and you know it ain't over yet yeah the fat lady sang oh man and it ain't over yet this is a tune that was written a couple hundred years ago that's when this cello was made. Thank you. 
on my door Cause my key It don't fit No lock No more I've been standing On my front porch All night long And I know there is something Definitely going on long Well, the lights are dim The shades are pulled way down low I knocked and knocked Until my fist got sore Dr. John Elk. Are we really on TV now? 